FDA's final answer on IMO? Not a fiber! Welcome to Price Plow. What's going on everyone? This is Mike Roberto, founder of Price Plow, and I have some supplement industry news, functional food industry news, where we've been covering isomalto oligosaccharide, or IMO, for the past few years. This is January uh, 23rd of 2020, and way back in 2017, we actually wrote an article calling IMO, IMO fiber a fraudulent fiber, and uh, we weren't very, very confident in the ability of this ingredient to become a fiber uh, based upon the data that we've been seeing. It seemed more like it was more of a kind of like a carbohydrate that had like 3.3 calories per gram or so, so a pretty cool carbohydrate, but we didn't really think it was a fiber, and it turns out that the FDA they didn't either. In 2018, they posted a new guidance stating that they had some new fibers out there, one of them being polydextrose is a pretty cool fiber, but nowhere on that list was IMO fiber, isomoto oligosaccharide, or Vita fiber, which is the trade name from a company known as Bionutra. Well, Bionutra had been petitioning to have IMO be labeled as a fiber because structurally they argue that there are some, uh, some similarities to other fibers. However, the FDA had always stated that it really didn't, according to the research that they had available to them, it never behaved like a fiber. And the real simple way of them kind of to determine that was that none of the studies showed increased laxation. So pretty much uh, the, the downstream effects of what we eat are kind of what they use to determine if something like this is a fiber or not, and none of the research studies really showed that, and so they, they did not add it to the list. Well, that was in about June of 2018, and then in May of 2019, BioNutra filed a petition. They translated a few new studies that were uh, not translated in their first petition, and uh, then they, they filed that and we waited. And as of January 9th of 2020, the FDA has posted their final decision, final answer that IMO is not a fiber. And it's basically, they gave the same reasons really, that they just, based upon the weight of evidence, they really didn't see a, a fiber-like behavior. Consumers expect fiber to give them the extra laxation and that really didn't happen. So at this point, IMO, cannot be labeled as a fiber per the FDA. So uh, that doesn't mean we're really against IMO as a, as a carbohydrate or Vita fiber as a like binding agent in protein bars. It actually seems like a really cool and dandy carbohydrate. It's just not a fiber. And so that's the latest news. If you see IMO labeled as a fiber or Vita fiber labeled as one, well then it's probably time for some of those labels to change. Now that might bring up, uh, you know, a lot of people thinking that the lawyers are going to be attracted to this. And the answer is that they already are. One a pending lawsuit. And I I have not looked at the, the legal documents at all. I haven't looked at the original complaint. I don't know where this stands, but on uh, like top class actions, uh, that one website, we'll post up a link up here. On that website, they did state that one brands has had a class action lawsuit filed against them, and one brands is the company that sold uh, that was sold to Hershey for hundreds of millions of dollars recently. And so I have to imagine, you know, this is, I'm not a lawyer, this is not legal advice, but I have to imagine that uh, this does not necessarily bode well for that case. I mean, do you really even need expert witnesses when the FDA themselves have stated multiple, multiple times, this is not a fiber. However, on the one bars that we're seeing online as of today, we do see a high amount of fiber content, like eight or nine grams of some of these bars were the only ingredient that could possibly be, you know, possibly be a fiber would be isomaltose oligosaccharide and it turns out that the FDA is not allowing that to be a fiber. So uh, we're going to have to see what happens with that one. But in the meantime, um, you know, my, my, my common sense advice as a low carb person and anyone who's really, uh, you know, a diabetic or pre-diabetic or just like chasing keto or anything like that. Honestly, I got to go with like the old school opinions, the old school thought, uh, taught, you know, listen to Eric Westman talk and he, he trained under uh, Dr. Atkins. People have been doing the low carb thing for medical reasons for a very, very long time. And basically they ignore all the whole net carbs thing completely. And they look at total carbs. That is the safest way to go because you really, you know, a lot of times you really can't trust what some of these labels are saying. There's ways of doing uh, rounding with like small serving sizes and rounding things off a little bit weird. And we don't know just because something's a fiber doesn't mean it's not going to have a glycemic impact. So a lot of people do suggest that you go with total carbs. If you really are, you know, calorie counting and carb counting and all that, go with the total carb content. And that's the safest play. Also, so, you know, otherwise you could be, you know, pricking your finger every 15 minutes before 
before and after and during you know, while you're eating these fibers, and maybe you'll find some that don't give you these uh, glycemic excursions. But on that note, uh, earlier um, around March of 2018, there was a study posted that looked at the glycemic effect comparing dextrose, which is basically straight glucose, versus a different type of IMO, not Vita fiber, so not bionutrients Vita fiber, but a different type of IMO. And basically, the blood sugar excursion was nearly the same. It went up and down right in line with dextrose, just a little bit below. Now, dextrose did have a higher insulin impact, which is important for both people who want that and don't want that. Uh, but in, in general, the uh, just looking at that evidence alone makes me state it makes me believe that if you have similar doses of dextrose and something else and the and the glycemic impact is about the same it's not going to be what people expect as a fiber so that added a little bit of weight to the argument and i think there's a couple other studies out there showing similar things so you know it, it's expensive but constant glucose monitors are incredible if you could ever afford one if you're a diabetic especially a type 1 diabetic definitely definitely look into getting a prescription for one of those Otherwise, you know, if you're really not sure about something, go for total carbs or get ready to prick your finger and check out those blood, uh, the blood sugar strips and they will probably tell you what's what because everyone does re respond differently and when you add in fats and you add in proteins, there will be a little bit of a blunted impact. But at the, at the end of the day, there's been a lot of companies who have made a ton of money. I'm talking like hundreds of millions of dollars selling this stuff as fiber and lowering the calorie numbers and lowering the active carbs and the carbohydrate numbers and all that. And at the end of the day, after years and years of going back and forth and looking at the glycemic impact that IMO has, you have to be honest with yourself. It's not a freaking fiber. And so that's all folks. We'll see what happens with the one brand's lawsuit. We know that Quest Bars had them way long ago and you gotta wonder, you know, if they'd been properly labeled, would Quest have been such a big company? Yeah, they probably would have been really good because they have great branding. But at the same time, you know, a lot of the, the allure to those, original, those early Quest Bars was because of this low net carb thing. And it turns out that it really, really wasn't the case. So, I, you know, it, it's sad. I know we all want to have a really good protein bar that's got the nice taste and the, the thick binding agents and all that and have no, you know, glycemic excursions from it. Uh, there are some tapioca starches. There are some other prebiotic fibers. We've had some success with some of them. Allulose, which Quest introduced to the market actually, is another really cool sweetener that's coming out that might even like pull glucose out. So there's a lot of cool things happening behind the scenes. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, if, if you want to have IMO on the label, awesome. It's about what, 3.3 calories per gram. It's just not a fiber. Cool carb, not a fiber. So at the end of the day, you know, I'm not really an IMO hater. I'm just an IMO hater when it's called a fiber. Go ahead and use it, but call it what it is. It is a dietary carbohydrate at about 3.3 calories per gram. We'll stay on top of this. And if there's any other news, because uh, it was, this uh, whole decision by the FDA was lit, written by Claudine Cavanaugh, uh, who is the director of the Office of Labeling, Nutrition and Labeling or something like that. So this, this hit the director level. This is definitely something they've been really, really looking at. Uh, they did state, of course, that new science can always come out and they are willing to reverse their decision if there's more studies that actually prove otherwise. But until then, it's not making that guidance and it can't be labeled as a dietary fiber. My name is Mike. I am the founder and CEO of Price Plow, and we cover a lot of the news, reviews, interviews, do a lot of stuff in the dietary supplement industry. I know we have a lot of low carb followers out here who are probably disappointed in this news, but hey, you just got to tell it what, like it is. We got to look at the research. We got to look at those charts. And when the blood sugar spikes are going up and down just like dextrose, that's a red flag. <laughs> anyway, we just brought on a new employee and we're going to be coming on harder than ever with more and more news. I know there's a lot of other drama going on in the East Coast. We're covering that as well. So stay tuned. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Join us here on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Price Plow.